Hi everybody, I managed to pick up one of these 5600X Ryzen CPUs. They're doing the headlines at the moment due to the single core performance and I did want to get a 5800 or 5900 CPU but unfortunately they were just all sold out and I only got this one luckily. So a bit about this CPU if you've kind of been living under a rock and you haven't heard anything about it. Uh, essentially Ryzen have just released their 5000 series CPUs and the real headline to it is just the single core performance. It absolutely blows the top level Intel chip out of the water and completely dwarfs anything that came before it. So the Ryzen 5600X is only a six core CPU and it's actually the bottom of the ones that they've released so far. But I think in sim racing at least, this single core performance is gonna be huge. As well as this, I'm expecting huge upticks in VR performance as well, which typically requires a really, really good strong single thread. So in this video, I'm gonna be comparing this new 5600X CPU to my existing 3700X CPU. Now, straight away, the 3700X is actually an eight core CPU and the 5600X is only a six core CPU. So it's kind of a bit of an unfair test and I really wanted to test the 3700 with the 5800, which is another eight core, but I couldn't really get one. Either way, I think it'll be an interesting comparison and I think it'll be interesting to see whether the budget 5600X, and I only use the term budget because it's the cheapest one out of the range, is beating the previous generation by far. So for anybody that's interested, this is the spec of my machine and um, let's just get into it. Okay, so I thought I'd just quickly start with some graphs, give people what they wanna see. And this is kind of the conclusion of really what we found, which is multi-core performance is worse on the 5600X compared to the 3700X, but single core performance and with that gaming is largely better. Removing the multi-core stuff from here, uh, you can see the red bars are the 5600X and in every title, every benchmark we did, it surpassed the 3700X, even though it had two less cores than the 3700X. Now, I'm gonna showing this up front just so people can see it, um, but I suggest watching each test to actually understand how I came to these numbers. So, I'm going to start with some non-gaming benchmarks just to give some comparison for the CPU. Uh, what you can see here is my 3700X multi, uh, multi-core score, so 4490. And this is just the single core uh, score coming up now, 490. So that's the 3700X, which is an eight core CPU. So let's see how the Ryzen 5600X does in multi-core and it's got 4,348. So the crazy thing with this, for a six core CPU, it's almost as good as the 3700X on multi-core performance. Considering it's got two less cores, that's really impressive. So let's now see what it does in single core performance. So just completing here, and it got 599. So my old Ryzen 3700X only got 490. That is huge, miles ahead. As well as this, it's actually another 50 or 60 points higher than the latest Intel chip. After this, I ran a BIOS setting that I think applies the 200 megahertz uh, OC, and I got 607, which is almost uh, the higher end Ryzen 5000 chip, uh, single core performance, and is still really, really high. So for anybody that was interested, uh, this shows my CPU temps while I'm running this uh, multi-core bench and I think you'll notice that the temps are pretty low. Okay, so moving on, let's actually look at some sim racing titles. So let's start with ACC. Um, you can see all the graphic settings here. This will be the same graphic settings for all the videos except for actually I realise the frame rate limit is on at 90 uh, and I turn that off later but to be honest it won't hit 90 on the old chip. And so we're sitting here, uh, 1080p. Uh, to be fair, the graphics are absolutely jacked. 
and you can see that we're maintaining about 70 to 80 FPS. So I decided to use this as my benchmark uh, just because I needed something repeatable. I'm not actually driving. I'm just uh, making it so that the cars drive away from me. So here I'm putting it to 4K and let's see what it does on the 3700X in 4K. Just give it a moment. So FPS is around 58 or so, uh, about 55 now, this is 4K. Obviously you could have it a lot faster than this if you just turn down the graphic settings, but I've got pretty much everything on Epic, I think. And uh, yeah, we're sort of maintaining about 60, which it's not bad. It would be playable, um, but it's, it's not brilliant. Okay, so jumped to the 5600X and I decided initially just to do a practice 1080p. You can see the FPS is well over 200. Um, good to see that it does definitely go above 90. So exact same graphic settings, just the chips different. And we're doing about 122 FPS. So as the cars drive away, it's slightly dipping, uh, but now it's going up and up. So we're up to 130, nearly 140 FPS. Okay, so now 4K, all the settings are ultra or epic or whatever it is. Um, we're doing about 80 FPS. So this is where previously it was under 60. Uh, it's now sitting about 80, so we definitely had a spike. Okay, so I'm really interested in VR performance, but it's worth me noting that I'm using an Oculus Rift and it'll only go up to 90 and stay at 90. So in an idle situation, we want it as close to 90 as possible. So 3700X, the same settings visually that we've seen before. So it's overkill for VR. And as you can see, we're struggling to maintain 90. We're at about 75 FPS. Now, obviously this is overkill for VR. You probably should turn it down if you're gonna use VR. Um, but I wanted to stress this and you can see here, we only managed about 70ish and now it's even only about 80. So in the car now, new CPU. That's the only thing that's changed. Graphics the same, same GPU, etc and we're sitting at 90. So this is VR, where once before it was at about 70, we're just sitting here locked at 90. And um, we already know that as the cars go away, it actually puts less load rather than more. So we just sit here at 90, where previously we we're only at about 70. So I decided to go and drive just to prove that it's still at 90 locked. Uh, this would be dropping like a stone. It has just dropped to 60 there, but um, straight back up to 90 again, so I don't know what that actually was. Um, but yeah, in the headset, this is completely smooth, crystal clear, beautiful. The CPU is working wonders. Okay, moving on, let's look at eye racing. Um, now, I start by looking at my graphical settings. As you can see, this is pretty much maxed. Uh, so on the 3700X, we saw outside the car, we were getting about 600 FPS, and inside the car, we're getting about 200 FPS. Now, there is one problem that I had. Uh, I don't exactly know what was going on here, but when I changed from 1080p to 4K, I didn't really notice any difference in performance, which was odd. Now, I can only presume this is because it was uh, still CPU limited potentially, uh, and therefore it didn't make a difference. Uh, so you can see I've just switched to 4K and we're still only doing about 200, so don't exactly know what's going on there. Okay, so jumping over to the new CPU, we're now seeing about 800 outside the car um, and inside the car, we're seeing north of 300 FPS. So I know this is probably only 1080p, um, but we've gained sort of 200 frames outside the car and something crazy like 150 inside the car. Uh, switching to 4K, I still have that same issue that we just saw. Um, it doesn't really impact it that much. Okay, so I figured a good test in iRacing was to get AI racing because ultimately the AI cars already cause a drag on the single core CPU performance. Okay, so we're on the grid. 
we've got about 120 FPS. The cars are off and the FPS is dropping. It's dropping. It's going down sub 80 FPS there. Now, if we switch over to the Ryzen 5 600X, straight away we've got 200 FPS here. And um, obviously that's a lot more than what we had at 120 on the other uh, CPU. But let's actually see how much it gets impacted as the cars head off. So it is still dropping, um, but we're still maintaining over 120 FPS. So we're actually maintaining what the other CPU did at the best situation in the worst situation. So I wanted to show uh, some temps of the CPU and also just some stats from the GPU as this is going through. You can see the GPU load's still pretty low, so we're definitely still CPU bound a bit. So moving on to VR. So once again, we've got our super high settings and when we jump in the car, we're maintaining 90 FPS. So not really too much more point to testing in a practice session. We need something a bit more challenging. Now, one of my viewers posted on one of my previous videos that uh, the circuit Catalonia Barcelona is terrible for VR performance. It's really unoptimized. So here we are in the 3700X with it dipping as we're driving on a practice server with no cars all the way down to 45 frames per second or 44. Pretty much terrible performance. Um, in the headset, thankfully, reprojection will be kind of covering this a bit, uh, but you never really want it to stutter and you don't want it to ever drop uh, lower than 90 if you can help it. Um, you can see that it is doing 90 in some places, but in other places, such as going onto the back straight, it completely dies. So jumping over to the 5600X chip. Now, where previously just sitting in the pits was already under 90. This time we're locked at 90. We're driving out, still 90. Uh, we're just not getting those dips that we had before. I'm sure they'll become a threshold and, and maybe I'd have to turn down the graphics or, or something, but um, as you can see here, 90 all the way. Um, for anybody in VR, um, having a solid frame rate is, is probably one of the best things. It's the best way to stop you feeling disorientated. And you have something called asynchronous space warp, which um, covers in frames if it drops too low. And that's why it drops to 45 in the old example, because it's basically then reprojecting a frame in between every time. Um, but your ideal is you're sitting at 90. And considering the only thing that's changed here is the CPU, that's really why this matters a lot. For me, this was the main attraction of these uh, new chips, the single core performance. And I haven't got a 5800 or 5900 to test, so I can't really compare. But from what I'm seeing, it's definitely worth getting a 5600X. For the price, its performance is really, really good, especially for VR. So I wanted to retest that scenario before with the AI cars and we're sitting here, we're at 90, but as soon as the cars come, we start to dip and we've gone all the way down to 60. It's struggling to get it back up to 90. And even as the cars disappear, we're still down at 60. Exact same situation again, same graphic settings, this time with a new CPU. We're sitting at 90. We're still at 90 and we're still at 90, which is great because the AI will be using some of that single core performance. So I actually only had draw 20 cars and eight behind. So let's just see what happens if I draw all of them on. On the new CPU, we're at 90 with all the cars on the grid visible. And let's see what happens to the FPS. We're still at 90. So this is something that I could have never done with my 3700X, especially in VR. Really, really cool. Okay, so let's look at something that isn't really sim racing, more of an arcade title. Um, here we can see Forza Horizon 4 in benchmark mode. 
and I'm actually going to show a different side to these CPUs. So this was 3700X and it got 163 frames per second average. And now we're on the new Ryzen 5600X. And let's see what this one gets on average. So 1080p, we get 190 frames per second average, which is a bit of a jump. But let's see what happens in 4K. Firstly, we've got the 3700X that is running in 4K manages 129 frames per second. Now jumping back to the 5600X CPU, we only manage 133 frames. Don't get me wrong, this is still a gain, it's still a good sign, but what it shows is that actually as you get to 4K uh, resolution, you're not getting the same benefit that you got at 1080p. So I don't know if this is a case of the two extra cores being in a 3700X, helping more at 4K, and therefore we've not seen as much of a gain in this scenario. So giving another example, um, very different than sim racing, is Watchdog Legion. And as you can see, have all the graphics maxed, running at 1080p on the 3700X. We're sort of getting around, I don't know, 70 to 80-ish frames here getting to the benchmark screen in a second. And we achieved an average of 92. So now we're on the Ryzen 5600X, 1080p again. All the graphics the same, nothing different. And this time the average is only 99. So definitely not getting as much of a gain. So switching to 4K, all the graphics maxed on the 3700X, we're actually sub 60 frames per second. Now, granted, this is probably maxed a bit high and I could just reduce the settings a bit if I wanna run it at 4K. And I even think you can use DLSS uh, to speed it up, but at average, we got 49 frames per second. So jumping over to the new CPU, what's the difference gonna be this time? Doesn't look like it's going much higher. We're still under 60 frames per second. and it's exactly the same 49 frames per second average. So why did we see such a gain in iRacing compared to these games? Well, one thing is these games are a lot newer, and so they may actually be designed to use multi-core performance more. The fact that we've lost two cores means that even though we've got a more powerful single core, um, we've actually got less multi-core performance here, and that's why it's not going up as much. Similar to this, I think for 1080p, that tends to be more single core performance based and 4K might require more overall grunt from the CPU. And finally, the benchmark that we're looking at, there's a lot of stuff going on. And if that's actually using AI to actually run that, then I guess you're taxing probably the multi-core aspect just as much as the single core again. Overall though, um, I think the performance is still good and just like I said, turn down the graphics if you really care about running 4K or actually just enable DLSS and I think I've seen benchmarks online where that will absolutely skyrocket um, in 4K. So not an issue, but definitely worth saying and pointing out. So in conclusion, should you get an AMD Ryzen 5600X? Well, firstly, uh, you better wait for them to come back into stock because they're currently out of stock. But I'd say when they are in stock, I would definitely recommend getting one, especially if you're sim racing or doing VR stuff. The single core performance is so good. Um, sure, the 5800, 5900, the 5950X, they're probably going to be better both from a multi-core point of view and a single core point of view, but then they're a lot more money as well. 
solely for the value of this chip, the single core performance in sim racing and VR is so good. So if your main purpose is gaming, definitely get this chip. I'd say if you're going to multitask, we've seen that the multitask scores are similar between my 8 core 3700X and this chip. So you're not really losing anything by getting this, but you might want to consider getting a 5800 or, or rather a 5900 probably if you actually want to do some multitasking. It's a lot more money though, almost double the price. So you've got to weigh that up. Now, the question is, what am I going to do about my pre-order for the 5800X that I've got? Should I keep it or should I get rid of it? Right now, I'm actually considering canceling my 5800X pre-order and just keeping the 5600X. My original plan was to sell the 5600X when my 5800X uh, pre-order actually came through. But to be honest, looking at the performance today, I'm just not sure that it's really worth it. Um, equally, looking at some of the benchmarks, it may be worth me holding on to the 5600X for a while. And then when the 5900X drops down in price considerably, maybe I'll pick up one of them. But for now, I'm definitely happy with the upgrade from the 3700X to this CPU for gaming and most importantly, sim racing and VR. So if you found this video useful, please like the video. And if you're new here, please subscribe. There'll be way more content on this channel soon. Uh, I'm actually gonna get back into doing sim racing. Now that I've got a decent graphics card and a decent CPU, I am um, really looking forward to jumping into lots of races soon. So please subscribe and I'll catch you guys next time. Cheers.